Well, Razorback fans, it's officially the Southwest Classic game this weekend with Arkansas and Texas A&M. And I really hate this game. And I'm going to tell you why on today's Locked on Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into Locked On Razor X Podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 1037 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. This episode of Locked On Razor X is brought to you by eBay Motors. A championship team is about bringing each player to a perfect fit for your team. Same with your vehicle. So for the parts that fit, head to eBay Motors and look for the green check. Stay in the game with eBay Guaranteed Fit, ebaymotors.com. Let's ride eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, and exclusions do apply. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Wednesday as we are turning the page now and moving on to uh, Arkansas and Texas A&M this weekend in Arlington as part of the Southwest Classic. How fun. Uh, We're going to have a very special guest on the show tomorrow of the Locked On Aggies. And uh, we'll do a little crossover action there uh, tomorrow or Friday. We'll, we'll play it by ear, but uh, we'll give a little uh, understanding of exactly what to expect out of this game. But I think I speak for a lot of you Razorback fans that this game against Texas A&M and the Southwest Classic in Arlington is the worst game ever. I hate it. I hate it. And I hate it because Arkansas loses most of the time and has lost most of the time. Now, I don't want to try to, you know, bring a little bit of negativity onto everybody's parade, but I'm just looking at the facts of like, you know, I feel like this game is always, every single year, the game that dictates exactly how good or how bad of a season Arkansas has. I don't know if, uh, I actually think I've done this on the podcast before. I I think I've discussed it. That since the Southwest Classic started back in 2009, was the very first year that it happened, Arkansas has only won four of those games. It's it's disgusting. They've only won four of those games. And in those four games that Arkansas has won, they've had an eight win, a 10 win, an 11 win, and a nine win season. 09, 2010, and 2011 were, of course, the first three years under Bobby Petrino, Arkansas won. And then in 2021, Arkansas's best season under Sam Pittman when they went nine and four was the other time they won. Every other year, they've lost to Texas A&M. Now, if you look at the games that Arkansas has lost to Texas A&M, they played a home-and-home home in 20... I guess it was 2012, 2013. So, yeah. Because uh, that was when they joined the conference and there was some sort of deal. I don't remember what the reasoning behind it. I'm sure there was a reason why they didn't have this game there in Arlington, but they decided to do a home-and-home home that season instead. And in those years, Arkansas got smoked in 2012, 58-10 to in College Station. That was Johnny Manziel's coming out party. And then in uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas lost 55-33 to with uh, Brett Bielman his first year. The other time that this game has not been in Arlington was in 2020 during the COVID season where Arkansas was so lucky to play at Texas A&M where they lost 42-31. to So they've lost a lot of these games. But let's take away the game in College Station or the game in Fayetteville. Let's just take that away. Because this is the Southwest Classic in Arlington. And I'm going to tell you why I hate this game. It's not just A&M. It's this game itself. So take those three games away where they were not played in Arlington. And look at the other matchups and the other results. Arkansas won the first three games, as we know. When they resumed in 2014 back in Arlington, Arkansas lost... 35-28 35-28 to 28 in overtime. A lot of you remember that game. That was the uh, skipper-tripper play. Love it. The next year, in 2015, Arkansas lost 28-21 to 21 in overtime. That was the year Arkansas went 5-3 and three in the SEC and had two of those games, which they should have won, against A&M in that one and also against Mississippi State at home against Dak Prescott where Arkansas had a blocked field goal. Arkansas should have gone 7-1 in 2015 in the SEC. They didn't. So it doesn't matter. But still, they lost in overtime to Texas a Then 2016, that was the 8 p.m. game, if I'm not mistaken, where Trevor Knight decided to, uh, I don't know, look like Reggie Bush and run for like 200 rushing yards. And Arkansas lost that game pretty handedly in 45-24, uh, to 24, 2016. 2017, Arkansas lost 
50 to 43 in overtime. Brett Beam was last season. Crazy game. I think it was, I don't think it was Kevin Someone's last season. No, yeah, it was Kevin Someone's last season. Both of them got fired at the same time. But Arkansas lost that game in overtime, even though they had a lead. The next year, Chad Morris's first year, AM beat Arkansas 24 to 17, beat him by a touchdown, which is pretty sad. Like, honestly, that should have been a loss for AM. If you if you only beat a Chad Morris coach team by seven points, you deserve an L. Even though you won, you still deserve the L. And then the next year, AM won in 2019, Chad Morris's second year, 31 to 27. If you only beat a Chad Morris coach team by four points, like you did in this game, you deserve two L's, in my opinion. But that's not what happened. Arkansas won in 2021. And then we know what happened last year in 2022. Now, why am I bringing all these up? Why am I bringing all these games up? Because I find it extremely fascinating, folks, that since the Southwest Classic has existed, there has only been three games, three games that ended with a team beating the other team by two possessions or more. Three games. Arkansas has won two of those. They did it in 2009, the very first one where they blew out Texas A&M 47-19. And in 2021, they won 20-10, to two-possession game. And the other one, Texas A&M, has won 2016 when they blew out Arkansas 45-24. Those are the three games in Arkansas, two of those, won. And every single other game has ended in Arlington. I'm just talking about the game in Arlington, not in College Station or in Fayetteville. The game in Arlington has always been where A&M wins by one Possession. Three overtime games. A touchdown, four points. Two points like last year. It's extremely, extremely frustrating. If you're a Razorback football fan, you know the frustration that this game provides each and every year. And it's almost disgusting to where I don't want to try to take anything away from Texas A&M because they won those games. But I would bet dollars to donuts that in each and every one of those losses, besides maybe 2016, Arkansas was the better team. Actually, no, I'll, Chad Moore sucks. So he's 2018, 2019. Throws up. But in most cases, Arkansas was the better team. They were the better team in 2014 and in 15 and in 16, even in 17. They were the better team in, in 2022, last year. Like, they were the better team, but because of stupid things that happen, whether it's a Dan Skipper tripping play or whether it's, you know, K.J. Jefferson diving from five yards out to keep Arkansas from going up 21 nothing, whether it's kicking to Christian Kirk. Like, just the, the, the dumbest things always happen in this game. And somehow, some way, Arkansas is always on the losing end. Now, in this particular game, this upcoming weekend, it's a huge game for both of these teams. Let's be honest about it. This game is huge for Arkansas because we know how it dict dictates the rest of the year. It can be great or it can be average or below average, depending on how this game goes. But also, a and i not saying they're desperate for a win, but they, they really need some wins. Jimbo Fisher is under a lot of pressure, a lot of fire. Uh, not that they haven't looked great this year. They haven't looked bad, but they haven't looked great. They haven't really looked like a team that's taken that next step forward. And this game has always been one that A&M doesn't get up for. Arkansas does get up for, but they always make the mistakes. They're always the one that's on the other side. And I, I just like, I'm almost like a, a tradition like no other. I can't wait to see how Arkansas finds a way to lose this stupid game. It's so annoying. But this is why I hate it. This is why I hate it. I hate it because it is never a reality of what these teams are at. Because even in the cases of like A&M, A&M had some really good years in those seasons that they beat Arkansas. Some really good years. But honestly, A&M's best seasons were when, uh, I guess in 2012 was one of their best years. And then in 2020, when they had Arkansas at home. But in most of those cases, A&M was a seven, eight win team. Arkansas, in a lot of those cases, was a, Seven, eight win team. But it's always about that particular game that dictates what either team does. I don't mind losing games. I don't mind, or let me rephrase that. I can accept losing games. But when this game continues to have some of the stupidest stuff happen each and every game, and each and every time, 
it gets to the point to where I don't even want to go to the games anymore. I'm going to be down there in Arlington. I'm going to go. I'm going to go because I'm a sucker. I'm an idiot. But I'm going to go. And I'm just hoping and praying and wishing that this is a time where Arkansas actually beats Texas A&M. There's only two more years left of the Southwest Classic. This game was created for Arkansas. This game was not created for A&M. Jerry Jones wants his guys in Arlington. And it was before A&M even joined the conference. He wants his boys in Arlington. This was created for the Razorbacks. It's about time they started repaying Jerry Jones and giving him the thanks that he deserves by actually going and winning some of these dadgum games. I really hope that happens, but it's just been, it's been really annoying. And I know I'm probably going to have A&M fans in the comments being like, hey, you sore loser. I am. I am a sore loser. I hate it. What, but here's what the cracks me up. I think it's like Arkansas has lost uh, 10 of the last 11 games, which is pretty terrible. I get it. But even in that case, Arkansas still leads the series 42 to 34. So even though A&M's won like 10 games out of 11, Arkansas still has like a 10 game lead on them in the series. So that, that sums it up a little bit. But this is a this is a very pivotal game for Arkansas. Hopefully they take care of business. Hopefully find a way to win. But God, I hate this game. I hate it so much. It just ruins my mood. I like to go down there to Dallas, see a bunch of friends I haven't seen in a while, have a good time. It never happens that way because of bull crap that happens all the time. Well, hopefully this year is the year that changes. It's a big one for Arkansas. But we'll talk more about some of the things that we have going on with AM tomorrow in the show and doing a little preview of it. But first, folks, I got to tell you all about DoorDash because we've all used DoorDash, right? When we wanted the food to be delivered and you know, we didn't feel like getting out, we had DoorDash, got the app, downloaded it, and got the food over there in a, in a very quick, fast, and in a hurry time. Well, here's what's crazy is that not only have you trusted DoorDash to deliver your restaurant favorites, but now you can get grocery delivery that actually delivers as well. With thousands of grocery stores to choose from, you'll have the best in your neighborhood and boost your local economy with each and every order through DoorDash. You'll get exactly what you ordered and they'll make sure that they make it right. So sit back and enjoy all the quality groceries just like you picked them up for yourself. And with DoorDash, if you get if you want to check them out, this is the best deal about it. You get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to $25 value when you use promo code locked on college at checkout. A limited time offer and terms do apply. That's 50% off up to $20, no minimum subtotal and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter in promo code Locked On College. Don't forget, that's promo code Locked On College for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Um, I addressed this a little bit yesterday, and I didn't really want to address it again, but I'm going to because uh, I think that I, I didn't, I won't say I took backlash, but I definitely was a conversation that was to be had on social media with Sam Pittman deleting his social media and some of the reactions from that. And when we talked about mental health for players yesterday, um, I don't. I, mean, I feel like I maybe did not do a good enough job of relaying my thoughts on it. And if I did do, um, if I did did not do a good enough job, then I apologize. Like I didn't want anybody to think that I was minimalizing anything, or I didn't want anyone thinking that I uh, was just all about like you know uh, not about mental toughness or anything like that. So I wanted to clarify some things, and especially with some of the stuff that's been going on on social media. Ironically enough about, uh, you know, as a former player, which I actually know, and uh, some fans and some media people getting into it. It was just all a very dumb thing. So this is, this is really what I wanted to say, and I'll make it pretty short because I don't want to regurgitate what I said yesterday, but I think it's very important to, uh, you know, have a concept and, and to be able to understand where I'm coming from and all this. You know, I believe that social media has done a lot of great things for people, and I think that with, especially with college athletics, seeing a lot of student athletes on there and, you know, being able to interact with student athletes and especially when things are good and, you know, see some of their lives and some of the things that's going on in their life. I think there's a lot of benefits to it, but with Sam Pittman, when he uh, deleted his Twitter, you know, people kind of took it in a way of insulting or like, you know, Oh, he's, he's just soft. He's just low class. You know, he's just like, he's, he gets paid $5 million a year, blah, blah, blah. And all this stuff that it's just like, 
you, you can have your own opinion on it, but here's here's where I'm going to just lay it out for you. Because I had people asking me my opinion on this, and this is why I'm bringing it up. Folks, I'm going to make this clear. I do not give a rip about a coach who is on Twitter or off Twitter. I don't give a rip if a coach is on Twitter and then deletes it for whatever reason. I don't care if players are on social media and delete it for whatever reason. I don't care about anybody or anybody that's on social media that wants to have it or doesn't want to have it or deletes it or says that they can't handle it, whatever. I don't care. Do not care. And in this specific example, when we're talking about the head football coach of the University of Arkansas Razorbacks, I do not care if he's on social media or not. You know what I do care about? Wins and losses. That's what I care about with my football coach or my coach in general. If a coach is on social media and they're winning 10 games a year in football, that is awesome. I'm happy. If a coach is on social media and having a losing record, four and eight, whatever, I'm not happy. And it's the same thing if they're off social media. 10 games, I'm happy. Four, eight, four or five games, I'm not happy. That's all I care about. And I'm not trying to come down on any of you for having an opinion on this, because I have an opinion on this, obviously. All I am saying is, is that for those of you who are trying to go after people on social media or go after former players on it or you know, say how weak it is or how lame it is or how uh, mentally soft it is, like all of this nonsense, folks, just that doesn't matter. It does not matter. Wins and losses is all that matters. If Sam Pimmon reels off three straight wins and wins these next three games and then he comes back on Twitter, I don't care. Like People are going to be like, oh, so now you want to come back on when things are good. Sure, great. If it's winning games, do whatever you need to do. I don't care. I don't care. Coaches need to be graded off wins and losses. And we can criticize about coaches as far as you know some of the decisions that they make or maybe some of the play calling that they have you know those are the things that we can criticize like because we do and I do like I've been critical of this team and some of the decisions that's been made and some of the game management penalties all those things I have been critical of and I'm fine with and you should be too and I have no problem with you having those issues but when you're talking about something that has nothing to do with football like being off social media or deleting the social media who cares who cares I care about wins. If Sam Pimmon doesn't get the job done this year, if he goes five and seven this year, does anyone care if he was he deleted Twitter or not? No. And it's the same thing if he reels off and goes nine and three this year. I'm not saying it'll happen, but if it does, if he goes nine and three this year, is anyone going to be like, yeah, nine and three was fine and all, but Sam Pittman, you know, he, he deleted his Twitter, and and you know that's I I not have no respect for him. That season sucked because we only we went nine and three, but he deleted his Twitter. No, none of you are going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Focus on the things that matter when it comes to your football program for your coach. Focus on the issues that they've had, the penalties, the game management, the play calling. Let's focus on those things. Let's, let's bring it back in. Let's not worry about what coaches on social media or not. It does not matter. It does not matter. Okay? That's all I wanted to say. And I wanted to clarify my comments on it. I care about in the way of how it looks or maybe mental health when it comes to players and when it comes to coaches and being personal attacks. Those things I do care about because you know, I get that all the time. Well, maybe not all the time, but I get it a lot. So, yeah, I care about those. But when it comes to whether or not a coach is on social media or not and whether or not it's like a bad like a check mark against him and getting him fired, I don't care. I don't care. Just win games. That's all I ask. Uh, but we will uh, get to one of your questions that you actually asked uh, on social media. I got an interesting one about defense here in just a second. But folks, I got to tell you about the Jace case that provides antibiotics f- for emergency use. Five different life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. All it takes is to get a Jace case is to fill out a simple online form. And in some cases, jump in on a quick call with one of their board-certified physicians. You'll get ongoing care and physicians for any treatment-related questions. Doctor-created, and it's doctor-recommended. Re- So you know it's really good. Uh, We all know that there's times at our house where sometimes emergencies happen and 
uh, we have some sort of injury where we have some sort of issues that we need immediate help, but for whatever reason, we can't get it. You know, whether it's calling the ambulance, whatever. There's a lot of things that come into emergencies that we have to have emergency services. There's also a lot of things that where we can be prepared for anything that comes our way, and that's what Jace case is all about. It's very simple. When you fill out that form, you get a prescription, you get those life-saving medications right to your door. And it has all different types of medications to choose from and to be able to help you out. So with this listening of the podcast here on the Locked on Razorbacks, you can get $20 off these life-saving antibiotics today from Jace Medical by using promo code Locked On at checkout at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. Check it out today. Again, promo code Locked On for $20 off with your Jace case. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, I got want to take this question from uh, one of you listeners out there who actually DM'd me, and I want to make sure that I uh, get this right. Uh, it's from D Snow. So if uh, that's all I got from you, so hopefully uh, you know. But uh, I think his name is Dylan. But anyways, D Snow on Twitter X, whatever you call it. So this question uh, for the show: What's it going to take this season for the defense to be considered top tier defense? We have talent at a lot of key spots. Had a true test down south. Now we're heading southwest. Thank you for your time. Well, I think it also just depends on what your definition of an elite defense is. An elite defense meaning that you're ranking in the top 10 in the country. Is it top 25 in the country? Like, what's your definition of a elite defense? I'll give you my definition, and we can go from there. My definition of an elite defense is a defense that when people look at you and they see you and they think of you as a team, they're like, man, we're going to have to make sure we are bringing our A game offensively to have success against them. That's how I look at it as an elite defense is when you're known for that. You're like, people see it. People have to try to game plan for it, and it's not an easy thing to do. That's how I look at it as an elite defense. And for Arkansas this year, I don't know if they'll get to the elite defense status. I still think the defense is really good. I think they face the best offense in the SEC, one of the best in the country in LSU. We'll see what they do against a because we know Bobby Petrino is always going to have some great little tricks in his bag to bring out. But I still think Arkansas has a good defense for an elite defense this year. I don't know if it's possible because you just, it's a tough thing to do. It's not something that everybody has like some of the better teams in the country don't have a great defense. It's, it's a lot easier said than done. It's easier to have a great offense than it is a great defense. I'll tell you that. But for Arkansas to do that, I believe that here against like you have A&M, then you have Ole Miss and you have Alabama. Alabama does not have a great offense. Ole Miss does. And A&M is solid at offense, pretty solid. If you can get to the point to where, at the end of the season, points per game-wise, you're giving up less than 28 points per game. I mean, that's a great, I shouldn't say great, that's a good defense. If you're giving up less than 24 points a game, that's a great defense. If you're giving up less than 20 points a game, you're an elite defense. That's how I view it. Um, I don't know if they have the, I don't know if they have the, the, the ability to do that. I don't know if they're going to have the, uh, games to do that. I still think the BYU game is a, is a very unfortunate look because they had 38 points given up, but they still only gave up 240 yards or whatever it was offensively, so I still don't believe they should be blamed for that, but it is going to go against them. But this weekend against A&M, if they can show that they have a defense that can hold that A&M team, here, I'll, put it, I'll just lay it out this way. Arkansas in this game against Texas A&M, in the games just here recently, Arkansas has given up 23 points, 10 points, 31 points, 24 points, just in Arlington alone. I should say that's under Jimbo Fisher. I think that's fair. Under Jimbo Fisher in the game in Arlington, that's what the point total he's given up. If Arkansas holds Texas A&M to under 24 points in this game, they win. Even 28 points will probably get it. But if A&M scores more than 30, Arkansas is not going to win this game. It's just, it's just a very tough thing to do. You can say it's coaching and say it's players, and I think it's a lot of it, but can you do it at a place like Arkansas? Don't really know, but to me, that's what's going to be the key for Arkansas to actually have success in this particular game and try to have an elite defense moving forward. So, But appreciate the question, Dylan. And appreciate all of you listening in to Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have 
We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.